Uh, in this video series, I'll show you how to build the chassis, the roll cage, and brace it up and get it prepared to race. In the last video, we showed how to tie the front frame horns together. Now we need to, to attach the front frame section, the front clip, sometimes called, to the rear clip. In this particular car, there's no solid rear clip. It's folded sheet metal. It's kind of a unitized construction. but by the rules, we have to use that um, rear clip. We can't cut it all out and replace it with all tubing. So here I'm exploring around, setting the grass on fire, um, cutting holes and figuring out where the frame is under the floorboard. I've already drilled a couple holes with a hole saw to, to figure out at least the rough area where I need to cut. You can see that to the right there. And also there's a transmission brace right here I'm cutting through. This will get tied back into the frame eventually. Uh, it goes clear across the car to the other, other side and, and holds the tail shaft of the transmission. It's also spot welded to the, the floorboard. The floorboard's lower there because that's where the bucket seat is and really it's only the thickness of the floorboard between the bottom of the chassis and um, the inside of the driver's compartment. So. This is a very weak area of the car, so we have to open this up and, and put a inch and a half 0 0.120 tube in here. And I think that's what I'm preparing to do right now is measure for um, the length of tube. Yes, there we go. Also going to see that I'm having trouble getting the tube to fit. I'm going to start trying to smash the metal down, and that's not quite working, so I'm going to have to cut some of the, the metal out. Oh yeah, I just cut the emergency or parking brake, as some people like to call it, out because it ran right through that frame section in the back. Oh, and then I cut through the fuel line and bailed out of there. And I know you're not supposed to put water on a gas fire, but the grass under the car was catching on fire again. So <laughs> at this point I said, oh, there can't be any more fuel in there, and uh, proceeded to cut again. And this time I caught my hair, which I'm bragging about here. Um, Trish ran in and grabbed a little fire hood thing from our Adventures Out go-karting to protect my face this time, just in case there was any more gasoline. But I managed to, to cut through without hitting any more gas. I got that piece smashed down. Got the frame rail piece to fit in there. And um, so now I'm cleaning up some of the undercoat and dirt that's on the frame section so I can weld this in. I think I'm debating at this point whether I want to notch the front clip or not. Because I'd really like to tie that front clip into this pipe a little bit better because the width of that front clip is about three inches wide in this inch and a half tube. I eventually decided I couldn't get in there with the plasma cutter and that I would go ahead and brace that later with some custom cut plates. There's going to be a lot of plating going on in this car because we're going to have to tie into the chassis. Um, to the left of this bar in the back there's the leaf spring mount for the rear suspension and this needs to be very rigid. I'll probably say this multiple times over this car build. Um, you need to have a very rigid chassis um, to have a good driving car. I've heard people say before, oh no, you know, you need to have your chass chassis flex, but that's that's absolutely the wrong way to go about it. You're spring should be doing the flexing, not your chassis. So there's a gap here in this weld that I'm making and I'm doing a, a triggering technique to fill the gap. So I'm going to trigger and fill the gap and I'm going to go back and do a solid weld over the top of all these little triggered bridges that I'm doing. There we go, I'm doing the building the weld up. So the roll bar is going to land right on top of this this pipe and get tight in there and more triangulation. So I did the same to the other side and now 
I'm doing some more exploring and cutting through the floorboard. There's the leaf spring bracket. It's kind of a, a bulged, thicker piece of metal. I'm trying to smash it, smash that bracket down a little bit, and I finally gave up and started cutting a hole through it so I could put um, a diagonal brace that's going to go out to the roll cage. And there's my magnetic triangle um, square. That's pretty handy to have. So it's got a big magnet, so and it's uh, a 90 degree, so you can hold your uh, piece in. And it even has a little cut out so you can get down and weld in the very corner. So here I'm cutting a piece of square tubing so I can bend a flap over. I can't emphasize how important this is to to cap off the end of all pipes. I've seen many um, race cars that have open pipes and they get in crashes and there might be an other, another pipe that is attached to um, the tube and it will rip right out at that point. So close off the ends of all tubes. There I'm, I'm sealing the end of the tube so it will be much stronger. Uh, this tube that's going to go out towards the the door is also going to tie into the leaf spring uh, bracket and stiffen that up. There I'm tacking it in welling in place. The roll cage is going to land right out towards the edge closest to the door. And there I'm stitching it into the leaf spring bracket. And um, we're going to put some gussets in here. Gussets are little triangular pieces of metal that will spread the load across um, this joint. This other gusset, I'm just laying it in and I'm actually putting it right on the metal bracket that holds the leaf spring too. So I welded every side of it there. And there it is. That's tying the two frame rails together. Thanks for watching, and I'm Jerry Ellsworth.